Hi, so this is a um, summary of the Odyssey book 18. Uh, I have only done the ones, the, the books of the Odyssey that are relevant to the current A-level um, for classical civilization. So that means I've skipped books, um, everything, so 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. So just a very, very brief summary of that. Uh, in those books, Odyssey, Odysseus sorry, has been brought back to Ithaca by the Phaeacians. The ship has been turned to stone in vengeance by Poseidon, um, because obviously Poseidon has uh, is trying to get revenge on um, Odysseus for blinding his son Polyphemus. Um, so Poseidon has turned the Phaeacians' ship to stone because he's angry that they've helped um, his nemesis. Odysseus has been disguised as a beggar by Athene, met his son and revealed his true identity to his son Telemachus. He is now in the palace but is still in disguise. Okay, so Iris comes along, who is a beggar known for his greed, hoping to chase Odysseus out of the palace. He then begins insulting Odysseus. Odysseus gives him a black look, which is a common description of him in anger, it's very typical, and says that they are both beggars and are dependent on the gods. Odysseus warns him not to turn this into a challenge. Iris challenges him to a fight, obviously tempting fate. He, obviously, he is he is younger than Odysseus, and so he thinks his chances look good. Antinous, who is one of the leading suitors, um, he's kind of one of the most one of the named ones than the most evil, etc. So Antinous hears and calls all the other suitors to spectate. He suggests a competition where whoever wins can have a fatty goat's paunch for dinner and can regularly dine with them. They would allow no other tramp to beg from them. So yeah, Antinous is the worst of the suitors. Odysseus makes the suitors swear an oath that they won't help Iris in any way. Telemachus confirms that nobody will help Iris or else they will be ostracised. Odysseus then reveals his thighs, shoulders and chest, shocking both the suitors and Iris with his strength. Um, Athene makes him look even more impressive, uh, again a typical thing that she does to help him. And so they, the suitors then say that Odysseus will definitely win and Iris gets scared. He has to be dragged in order to fight. Antinous insults Iris, saying that if Odysseus wins, he will put Iris on a ship and send him to King Echetus, where he will have his nose and ears chopped off and penis fed to the dogs. Odysseus deliberates over whether to kill Iris or just hurt him, and then chooses the gentle blow. This is purely to maintain his disguise. It's not some sort of moral um, epiphany. It is just that he thinks that if he actually kills Iris with, with a punch the suitors will question who he is and maybe work out his true identity. Odysseus strikes Iris below the ear, breaking the bones, and the suitors laugh. He drags Iris by the foot to the courtyard and then goes back and sits down. The suitors come into the hall laughing, praise Odysseus, and say that they hope that the gods grant him his dearest wish. Then they give him food. This is ironic because, obviously, his dearest wish is to see them all dead, so in a way they're... um bringing on their own fate. Odysseus speaks to Amphinomus, um, who is one of the nicer of the suitors, and Odysseus is actually trying to spare him, um, saying that he knows of his father. He says that he used to be wealthy, but made mistakes to ruin it. Then he warns Amphinomus that what he is doing is wrong, and that Odysseus, in inverted commas, will be back soon, and then he will suffer. This is... Um, pointless anyway really because Athene has already decided that all of the suitors will die <coughs> sorry um, and Amphinomus will die by Telemachus's spear so Odysseus even trying to spare him is kind of pointless but it demonstrates Odysseus's um, moral high ground um, in this whole situation Odysseus makes a libation and then Amphinomus re-enters the hall with a sense of foreboding Athene makes Penelope want to appear to the suitors. Euronomi, the housekeeper, agrees with Penelope's suggestion to do this and tells her to wash first. Um, Euronomi also says, It was always your special prayer to the gods to see him with a beard. Uh, this is quite an odd thing to say because when leaving Ithaca to go and fight in the Trojan War almost well, about 20 years ago now, um, Odysseus had made Penelope uh, Penelope promised to remarry if he wasn't back from Troy by the time that Telemachus grew his first beard. So the fact that Euronomi is saying that she always wanted to see him with a beard 
almost suggests that Penelope wanted to remarry, which is atypical for her character, um, because she's always portrayed as this sort of um, devoted wife who is who is just longing for her husband to return, not ever committing infidelity, even in the 20 years of his absence. So this statement is very um, odd, and it's unclear what Homer is trying to convey here. Um, but it, it, th- this might be a nice point to make if you're if you've got a, a question about Penelope or devotion in the Odyssey. Penelope refuses to wash her face because the gods took away her beauty when Odysseus left. She will, however, appear with two other women. Um, this is typical modesty of a woman because a woman should not appear in front of men who aren't family without a veil and accompaniment. Um, so this is an insight into uh, Homeric life and to the standards of women in those days. Athene makes Penelope fall asleep, then gives her immortal gifts to improve her beauty. She cleanses her cheeks with Aphrodite's ointments, and then um, Penelope ends up taller, fuller and whiter. So this is to inflame the desire of the suitors. And it's interesting, The this is the ideal female in ancient Greece, so they wanted someone very curvy, very pale, tall. Um, so again, another insight into beauty standards in uh, Homer's time. Penelope wakes up and says she wishes she could die in such peace right now, um, because she's quite peaceful. She goes down, sorry, so she's constantly depressed and suicidal after Odysseus's long absence. She goes downstairs with two maids and then covers her face with a veil. The suitors think she is very attractive and all become very aroused wanting to shag her. Um, Obviously, Homer puts it in a bit more eloquent language. She criticises Telemachus for allowing the beggar, um, or other, in other words, Odysseus, to be so badly treated. He apologises, um, but says that he can't help it with so many suitors, and he longs to see them all dead. This is um, T becoming much more ballsy, or in other words, confident. His um, masculinity is showing he's ageing, or, or you know, growing up. Um, so again, Telemachus, we see throughout the books in Ithaca, him gradually um, developing into someone worthy, um, a worthy son of Odysseus as a hero. Eurymachus compliments her on her looks, but she says again that she lost her beauty when Odysseus left and she is miserable without him. And then he told her to remarry when Telemachus grew his first beard. She says that the suitors are not courting her correctly. They should be giving her feasts to share with her friends and presents, etc., rather than taking her reserves. Odysseus is pleased by her cunning words. So this will prolong the time until she has to choose, because now um, now that she's mentioned this, they're going to be fighting more for her, and also it will gain her jewels and money, etc. Um, so he knows that obviously he's going to return before she can remarry, he's going to reveal himself, but she doesn't. she's not aware of this. Uh, but he is like quite happy that she's going to have more jewels and money for when he comes back as well. Also, this is a, a, a demonstration of Penelope being cunning, um, which represents her as a great match for Odysseus, um, because he is always represented as a cunning hero. Antinous says that they will all give her gifts, but will not return to their own estates until she chooses one to remarry. They each send a squire to get gifts and give her jewellery. Penelope retires to her room, leaving the suitors to party. The maids are feeding the fire, and Odysseus tells them to go and cheer her up, leaving him to tend the flames. Melantho, who is a maid uh, that Penelope had raised as if she were her own child, uh, was in love with Eurymachus, one of the suitors, and had become his mistress. Um, Most of the suitors had taken some of the maids as mistresses, however this was considered treachery by the women, as they should have had loyalty to their house. So Melantho insults Odysseus and treats him very poorly. He calls her a bitch and then threatens to tell Telemachus, so the women run away in panic. Odysseus tends to the fire and schemes the suitors' deaths, and then Athene makes the suitors abuse Odysseus further. This is not Athene um, being sort of sadistic or enjoying his suffering. This is purely to increase his anger and maintain his desire for revenge. Eurymachus calls him bald and then offers him work on a farm, correcting himself and then saying that Odysseus is clearly too lazy and greedy to do any work. This is a relatively common perception of beggars, 
um, people generally believed that the reason that they were destitute was because they were lazy rather than, um, you know, a problem with society or, or the, you know, economic flaws. Odysseus demonstrates his agricultural knowledge, insults Eurymachus, and then says he wished Odysseus would return. It's foreshadowing. Eurymachus angrily shouts, picks up a stool, and throws it at Odysseus. Odysseus ducks, and it hits a wine steward instead. And then Telemachus says a god must be stirring them up, which is, again, um, quite interesting, as that is exactly what's happening. Athena is doing that. So Telemachus is gaining more knowledge of the world, like uh, wise world worldly wiseness that's not how you say it but you know what I mean um and sends him to bed the men are surprised that he has the balls to say this so Amphinomus agrees with him they make libations and then they all go to bed okay so thank you for listening this is uh, a book summary of book 18 of the odyssey I will be doing book 19 and so on um imminently so keep an eye out thank you